Hello, this is Quentin Carton, Automation Engine Service Now. Uh, in today's uh, demo video, I want to showcase the new uh, uh, feature in Integration Hub uh, called Spock Generator. We are um, in the Service Now Vancouver release. Uh, this is a new uh, feature to help accelerate the time it takes to create a new Spock. Uh, in service now a spoke in service now is uh, basically an integration set of action uh, that you need to perform on an external system um, service now provides out of the box spoke that allows you to connect service now workflow to external system and those spokes supports many different protocols um, like you know powershell uh, ssh um, rest api web services ggbc any, a lot of different protocols. Um, the most common way to connect uh, ServiceNow to uh, external system is to use um, an API. Mo most modern applications out there use um, API, so the team has created the Spoke Generator um, that you can use to create uh, a new Spoke for any uh, third-party tool that have an API that respects the OpenAPI uh, 3.0 specification or format. So that's what I'm going to be demonstrating today. So I have an example of an API that uh, is respect the Open API standard, the 3.0. I created that API completely outside of ServiceNow. It's hosted in in the cloud somewhere, and that API is as, as just one method, and that method is their check user. Um, you, this API requires when you call that specific method, required to pass three three parameter. And uh, what you see on the screen is the um, API doc. I'm using the Swagger UI uh, to uh, just publish the API documentation. So you can see the first name, last name, date of birth. That's what the API is taking as parameter. And then the expected result, if the user exists, if the system, the API return that message. If the user ex doesn't exist, the API return that message. So um, the idea is a, a real life, a real world example would be I need to leverage the API and make those calls from a workflow and service now. So you, for this, you will need to create um, a new SPOC, a new integration to connect service now to that uh, external API. So that's exactly what we are going to, uh, to do. First, let me show you um, live how that API works. So I can even test that API from, um, from the browser. So here I'm, I'm passing the parameters. Uh, you can see the URL there, the parameters required by that API. And you can see the return. So if I put a user that I know doesn't exist, for example, Tom, Tom Doe, the, the message, the API return user does not exist. So we can see that the API is live and it's working. Um, so now the idea is to go in service now. Uh, and actually, before I do that, I want to open the, swa the, um, the Swagger file. And it's a YAML format. That's what the, um, described the API in uh, an open API uh, standard, the 3.0 standard. So I'm going to open this in a new tab. And that's what should look like a YAML file for an open API 3.0. Uh, so this it needs to respect that format for us to be able to use that file to create the Spock from, from that file. So I'm going to copy paste this address because I'm going to have to give this to the Integration Hub Spock generator to create the Spock uh, for me. So going in Flow Designer. Uh, so you see the UI have changed a little bit in the Vancouver release. Now if I click on the create new, I have the Spock. I create a new Spock action available for me. And when I click on this, you'll see uh, what I can do. I can put an icon, a logo for that uh, new Spock, put a name. I'm going to put a very easy name, very uh, maybe user, user very brief. Um, I'm going to put a number because I'm not sure if I already created that one and then it's generating the application scope name for me I can put a description uh, check if um, return if the user exists or not All right create a new and continue now this is where you can feed the system with the, um, the YAML file the open API specification or you can also decide to manually create the Spock, meaning you're gonna have to select yourself the REST API step, put the diff various, the different parameters for that API. But if you have a YAML file, it's, it's just easier to create the, the Spock. 
the system is going to ask me the, for the YAML file. So I'm going to just do that right now, putting the URL of that YAML and click import. It's asking me about the, what type of authentication uh, that uh, API is using. Uh, this is a simple example. I don't actually use any authentication for that. Uh, so I'm just going to put uh, QC no hurt. We're going to pretend I'm going to be using this. And I click on generate operation. Now the next screen is showing the different methods uh, that are available from that um, API. My YAML file uh, only talks about that check if a user exists action. There's only one method um, described in the open API uh, file. So I'm just going to click on this one. Um, but most of the modern application will have hundred hundred of different methods. So, but for your workflow from a service now perspective, you may just want to use one or two actions. So make no sense to just add a hundred of different action in your Spock. Yeah, I click publish. And then uh, the system should return the publish automatically the action, check if a user exists. And if I click on this, um, the system is going to process and show me the basically the Spock action that it created for me. So you can see that now this is something I can use directly from a workflow and I can start interacting interact with the with the external API. So if I click on that step, you can see more detail. Um, it's automatically configured to use the connection alias. Is one thing I need to configure is the base URL because I don't think I'm giving this. Uh, it was set automatically. So, uh, but the rest of the method and input output are already configured automatically. So if I click there and click open, I should probably be able to create a new connection for that alias and provide the actual external URL for my endpoint. So if I click here create new credentials. I'm just going to put a uh, connection name, QC verif um, user. And then this is where I need to put the actual um, connection point endpoint. And I know this is it. This is the URL I need for my endpoint. So this will be my uh, yeah, API endpoint that I want to point my um, spoke to. Um, so let's um, Let's do that. I think I close that window. I'm gonna reopen it there. There we go. And I can put this uh, URL there. Finished HTTP. There is additional step if you use HTTPS. You want to make sure you import the certificate in your instance key store. So um, you won't have um, SSL issues and uh, API key, I'm going to put whatever um, I want because I'm not actually using the API key. I just want the connection endpoint there. Create. Let's save it. All right. So at this point, I think I can update and close that window. See, the base URL has been updated, so I know it's going to point to my actual end endpoint. And now it's time for me to test if my integration works, we just created a new integration. So let's, let's try to see if it works. So um, to save time and make sure it works, I'm going to use the, um, the value that I have there. So date of burst, and I think you can put John Doe, and click return test and see if the, the action works. And if it works, I can already use it in my workflow. Now you can see parameter that I've passed, and I can go and see the different results. And if I go at the bottom, you can see the response body from the API, user exist. So now I can have access to the response body, and I can, if I use this from a workflow, um, I can make a business uh, logic in my workflow to, uh, to progress in the, in the process. So we, we can try again, and I can put another different value and for example something that I know doesn't exist team carton and I click run and uh, we can see that uh, the API should return a user does not exist because I know the user does not exist right so now if I'm happy with that um, I'm happy with this I can already consume that API from a workflow and the way I will do it is let's say I'm going to do a subflow um, demo spoke generator. 
I can create the flow in my particular application scope. And then I can add uh, my new newly created um, newly created um, Spock Spock action, which I already forgot. Uh, check if a user exists. Check uh, if that was this one. Check if a user exists. So now I can put my so I'm in a workflow and I can leverage my my new spoke pass the parameters and I will get in return the output of that um, uh, of that API. So I hope that was useful. It was a quick seven minute uh, demo video to show you how this works, actually 10 minutes. <laughs>